Casper and Dennis here for Submission Radio Australia, proudly brought to you by Massage. He's standing here with UFC Hall of Famer Uriah Faber, just days away from Quintet 3, which takes place on Friday the 5th of October, obviously Saturday here, uh, sorry, in, in Australia. Got to say, man, you're looking tan. You're looking like retired life has uh, been treating you very well. Yeah, man, uh, thick and tan. That's, that's how I am right now. I was just in Hawaii and... Uh, you know, having to lose a couple a couple of LBs for this thing to stay within the team limit. I'm excited, man. It's gonna be so much fun. When you say thick, how thick are we talking? Because I know you you sort of have been on our show a lot of times talking about that weight cut, talking about you walking around weight. How much are you walking around at these days? It's been, you know, I I lent my scale out, and one of my guys lost it, so I didn't have a scale for about a year. And so I never really weighed myself. I'm weighing about 165 on a regular basis. I, I get up after a, after a good meal to 165, which is huge for me. What were you walking around when you were uh, fighting, when you were active? Uh, like 58. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I put on about 7 pounds and, you know, filled out a little bit. I got the little dad bod going. <laughs> Let's talk about Quintet for a sec, because this is a pretty crazy concept. It's number three here. You mentioned to us before in the media room that you'll be cutting weight for this one. Sort of explain the theory behind that. There's a set weight limit, and a bunch of guys are apparently going to be cut, cutting weight on Team Faber. Yeah, we're going to be cutting weight just because, um, you know, for, for the team aspect of it, we have to be under 946 pounds. And I didn't even think about that. I was just like, okay, what guys do we want? And... Uh, and so we had to work backwards, and we were a little bit over. So Were you ever at a point where you thought, well, we'll get this one guy who's 500 pounds, and then we'll see if we get a whole bunch of really, really small people to fill out the rest I of the thought, team? I thought of everything. So, yeah, we thought about that and, uh, you know, kind of gauged who was interested, who would be the best guys. And, um, you know, it's awesome because Dustin Akbari and I we were the first two guys on the team. We started it when he was 15 years old. Uh, he had a key to the jiu-jitsu gym, and I was coaching wrestling at UC Davis, and so it's cool to see it full circle. He's a world champion now, you know, you know, making his name in the jiu-jitsu world, and I've done my MMA, you know, accolades, and now we're getting to compete together. So um, it's it's pretty cool. I imagine this would be one of the things that sort of drew you out and, and got you into this competition. You spoke about it a bit earlier, but for those who may have missed it, what how special is it for you to be facing someone like Sakuraba, someone who you've looked up to for a long time? Yeah, you know, I used to have a two hour and 30 minute like ghetto VHS, VHS tape and it was all Sakuraba's fights and so um, you know back then it was hard to get your your hands on on great stuff it wasn't like today you know where you could just go on the internet and everything which is weird to weird to say but that's 2003 you know um, so uh, it's awesome man you know I, I was inducted into the Hall of Fame the same time as Sakuraba which is like weird for me because in my mind, he was such a you know on such a pedestal, and now we're competing together. So um, I'm excited to to go to combat with the guy and and get the W. Mentally, how does that go? Sort of facing an idol of yours. I imagine if you're facing just another random person, you wouldn't sort of uh, not that you wouldn't care, but I guess if you beat your idol, does that sort of do something for you? Is it a little bit weird when in a, in a sense almost like the, the the apprentice becomes the master? Um, you know, I think I'm probably past that at this point. In my career, I fought Jens Pulver back when he was a guy that I looked up to, and uh, I've competed with guys on all different levels over the last 23 years. So um, at this point, it's somebody that I respect a lot, that I know has a lot of tricks, and, and I'm looking forward to a great chess match. That's like, you know, leisure time is jiu-jitsu, chess, and, and handling business, and, and so I'm doing all three in, in this uh, competition. It's interesting, obviously the media is here and it's a big competition, but does it make you sort of want to come back to fighting? You know, you always mention to us if the right fight comes along, you might be down for it. Would you be open to coming back and fighting, sort of being back in the competition and feeling the vibe of the excitement of competi competing against legends and big names again? Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not out of that realm completely. I, I've, you know, I, I stopped in the fight game because I wanted to, not because I'm like a broken, broken dude. I, I just wanted to keep my brain and, and my keep my focus for other things at the time. Um, I wouldn't be against it. You know, it's funny. You get all sorts of offers. Of course, I'm still contracted with the UFC, but there's a lot of big money out there for easier fights. To Have be you honest. gotten some crazy offers lately? I've got some great offers. I just, you know, from the I, UFC. No, not from the UFC. From everyone but the UFC. And uh, you know, they've got me locked down on a contract. The, the way the contracts work, you retire, it puts everything on hold, and I've got fights with them still. But you know, I've got some. 
some big money opportunities that you can't can't really jump on and you know i'm retired and i, I enjoy that and and uh is there a time window in your mind where you think that kind of guy is the option to come back and fight again did yeah. you sort of set a time limit in your head like a couple of years and i'll definitely I, sort of hang it up for sure i didn't really i didn't really think about it i mean mm. when i decided to retire that was that was it for me but uh you know i stay in the usada pooling because i've never done any PEDs and it's no sweat off my back that I'd be woken up on occasion just in case there's an opportunity to pop up. Um, if you don't do that, you have to wait four months. So I think the big money is last minute and I'm always game. So you'll basically be filling in in the main event this week at UFC 229. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Just, just quickly, I want to get a quintet prediction from you, but before we jump to that and we let you go because you're a busy guy, a prediction for that fight, Khabib and Conor McGregor. Obviously, you know Conor well. You guys have a bit of a relationship, and but you also know grappling well. Obviously, a grappling contest coming up. You're a great wrestler yourself. How do you compare Khabib's wrestling to that of Chad Mendes, who's more of an explosive, I suppose, grappler? Shoots in, gets the double leg. We saw it against uh, Conor McGregor in the first fight. Compared to a Khabib, who's a tenacious grappler, but is more of an A to B to C following the steps, sort of gets a limb and works on that takedown over a longer period of time. Who do you think is sort of the more, more dangerous grappler for Conor McGregor to fight against? I would say Chad's the more dangerous grappler because of athleticism, pure athleticism, explosivity. Um, if you ever touch Chad, and I haven't touched Khabib, so I don't know, but he's like a, like touching a stone wall. Um, and then, you know, I've, I've only taken Chad down in practice over the years, like I think once or twice. Uh, He's, he's another level of, of, of wrestling, and Khabib's probably in the same boat. So um, if it's the same Connor that went against Chad Mendez, because Chad, if it weren't for fatigue and a two-week fight and him being hunting and drinking beers on the river, uh, you know, it would have been a different story. I think if Connor hasn't made those improvements and really dedicated time and energy to, to fill those gaps, then I think he's going to be in trouble. But I would assume that connor has been doing that. He's got great coaches. He's got, uh, you know, the 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 ability to to hire folks and 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 has the time and leisure to to put in the work. So if he's made the improvements and Chad's fight was that three years ago, something like that, three and a half years ago, you can make some massive improvements in three and a half years. I know. If you look at my career, every three and a half years, I was a completely different fighter, and, and my stand-up had evolved, and this had evolved, and my jiu-jitsu had evolved. So um, I, I'm going to lean towards Connor just because I, I, I'm assuming that I'm, I'm assuming like like Blackjack, he's got a, a face card under under the deck. All right, well, as we wrap up a quintet prediction, I want to know from you, Uriah, how long, I mean, you're facing a legend, so just winning against Sakuraba, it would be a big, big deal. But how long do you think you can hang in there and uh, how many matches do you think he can last in there back to back this coming Friday or Saturday in Australia? You, you and Josh Barnett potentially wouldn't that be crazy? That would be crazy. You know, uh, a, a tied Uriah favor against Josh Barnett yeah, as well. Yeah, that, that that that'd be that'd be incredible. If if I can get a quick submission against Sakuraba, then I have to get another quick submission and then face Barnett. Um, I I'm not sure. I would love to see it happen. Uh, I'm not a guy that's easy to submit by anybody in any shape or form at any time in my training. I can go 45 minutes, you know, hard and not not have an issue. So um, it's possible. Is it more likely that I could maybe get one submission and then eliminate someone by not getting submitted? I, I could see that a little bit more than, than getting to Barnett, but you know, you never count yourself out. I'll be looking for the kill. We're going to be excited. It's going to be this Friday, October 5th, and it's going to be the 6th in Australia because of the time difference. You're right, Faber. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. My pleasure, guys. Good to see you guys in person again.